In four decades, Baba Kalyani has grown the Kalyani Group's turnover from 3 crore rupees in 1973 to 16,000 crore rupees in 2014 and in the process has made Bharat Forge a force to reckon with globally. Bharat Forge is a leading global automotive forging player catering to virtually every global automotive OEM and tier 1 suppliers through its eight manufacturing plants, marquee brands like Daimler Chrysler, Toyota, BMW, Ford, Volkswagen, Audi and others source their complex forging requirements including machined crankshafts, front axle beams and steering knuckles from Bharat Forge. This easy global acceptance has been possible because Baba Kalyani has transformed the company from being a mere supplier of components to becoming a preferred technology and engineering driven development partner for all his clients. Bharat Forge has this uncanny ability to understand the customer's requirements very well and then translate that into a, uh, um, a solution. I remember uh, when I met with uh, Baba Kalyani uh, Sahib a long time ago, um, they were working on one particular thing and he gave me the incidents where uh, they had understood a customer's requirement and the customer was expecting that in a limited period of time Bharat Forge would come back and give them a drawing. But Bharat Forge actually sent a prototype part. That's how fast Bharat Forge was able to react. And that really sort of shocked the customer in Europe that a company in India can react so well. So what Bharat Forge has done is actually create this new paradigm about Indian suppliers from what used to be that not only you won't get what you have asked for, but whatever you get will be very delayed and uh, you will get it in poor quality, has been completely transformed by Bharat Forge saying that you will get it much faster than any European guy can make it, you will get it at a much better cost and you will get it at much better quality. And I think that has been the cornerstone of success for Bharat Forge. I can revisit it. Now, when I look at your company over the last five decades, there have been several inflection points. In each of the inflection points, you have used that opportunity to grow bigger. Could you walk us through what made you do that? And recently, you're de-risking your model now by going to five critical new areas. You're right. Uh, this has been largely triggered by events that created difficulty in our businesses. So the first inflection point was in the 80s when we had the first uh, major recession. Uh, in those days, Bharat Forge had four customers, uh, each one contributing 25 to 30 percent of our revenue. Okay. And uh, I mean, they were the auto companies uh, in India. And if uh, any one of them had a problem, or if we lost business with, uh, you know, any one of them, uh, you know, we were in great difficulty. So uh, when that uh, downturn came uh, in the mid '80s, uh, we decided that the only way we can broaden our market was export. Okay. So that started our first uh, export drive. So that was the first point of inflection. It was only easy because uh, uh, we had conventional technology. We were a typical Indian company with a business model of low technology, a lot of people, uh, unskilled manpower, uh, uh, low capital investment. And therefore, uh, on the face of it, everybody thought you could compete because uh, you know everybody thought cheap labor means compete. Sure. But we just couldn't compete. Uh, uh, we were unable to compete. And that created the second inflection point in 1989-1990 when we said uh, we can't work like this. We need to have uh, very high technology. We need to have highly skilled people. So we did our first major investment in automation. Uh, we gave voluntary retirement to 2,000 employees. And uh, for 2,000 employees, we hired 600 engineers. Oh. Uh, that was our second inflection point and that kind of just took us on the export curve uh, very rapidly, uh, first in North America, then in Europe, then in China. And then when we became so successful on exports, we said, why not try to be a global leader in this business? To be a global leader, it was clear that you needed to have uh, operations in different geographies, or at least the important geographies where the markets were. Okay. And that was largely Europe, North America, and China. And that's where we did our acquisition. So the result was that from 2000 to 2008, we grew in eight years ten times. From 100 million, we went to 1.2 billion in eight years. Okay. 
what makes Bharatpur unique that all the marquee brands come to you? We are very customer centric. You know, we will bend backwards uh, as a company to do whatever our customer wants us to do. Whether that's, that means invest that in, in capacity, that means, you know, invest in technology, manufacture products in other parts of the world, uh, in other geographies. Uh, so we are highly customer centric. Look, we can kind of dovetail with the government focus also in manufacturing, in <coughs> infrastructure and defense. So that also gives you a, a bigger push, you feel? For the industry? Yeah, we are ready. Or you're ahead of the curve? We are, we are way ahead of the curve. Uh, I think in our business it would be boasting, but I would say that we are at least 10 years ahead uh, of the curve uh, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, capability, in terms of hardware, uh, actual mm -hmm. hardware. Because this is a highly capital intensive industry, it's not easy. It's not just capital intensive, but it's also technology uh, intensive. So you need a huge, uh, you need a lot of talent. Lot of Just do what your heart tells you. Don't worry. Look back from a 3 crore company to a 16,000 crore company. What made the success possible? If you were to highlight three or four things. We all have basic values. And I think one thing about Indians in general, if you somehow can trigger that little sense of pride uh, in wanting to do something, I think it generates a lot of energy.